Welcome back. We stick with corporate results and it was actually a good performance uh, from Indian hotels. It's a huge 30% uh, improvement in the profit and about a 16% rise in EBITDA as well. Uh, the reason why we could call it mixed is uh, if you compare it quarter on quarter. Fourth quarter is always the strongest for the hotel industry. It was for Indian hotels and so if you compare with that, the occupancy looks like, uh, you know, about half a percent uh, lower. But we have the man of the moment with us, uh, Mr. Puneet Chatwal, Managing Director and CEO of Indian Hotels. Good morning, Mr. Chatwal. Always a pleasure having you with us. Uh, well, it's a strong year-on-year -year rise in occupancy from 70.4% to 74.7%. But you spoilt us with an ultra 75% uh, plus occupancy in the fourth quarter. How do you see it now uh, with the events lined up for the year? Um, I think, uh, firstly, thank you for having me. The seasonality in the business uh, is there to stay. I think uh, Indian hotels or any other hotel company cannot change that, especially with a diversified portfolio like we have. So just a correction, uh, Q3 is traditionally the strongest. Q4 is the second strongest. Uh, and if you get uh, Q1, uh, as a good start, I think then you're in for, uh, you know, you're ahead. Uh, normally, if you go back five years, seven years, 10 years, you know, Q1 and Q2 have not been profitable, definitely not for Indian hotels. So I think if we start on a good note, the, uh, the Q3 and Q4 can only augment the performance of Q1 and Q2. Okay, uh, uh, you mu must have been uh, seeing the benefit of uh, the revenge uh, uh, travel that we saw after COVID. What is your estimate of consumer sentiment now? Does it remain strong? You may already have pre-bookings for up until Q3 as well. And then you have all those events, uh, uh, beauty pageants and, uh, uh, you know, uh, test matches. H how, how are you estimating? Do you get back to 75 plus? Yes, yeah, so let me say, number one, consumer sentiment is strong. The sector, besides being hospitality and food and beverage driven, is now slowly also becoming a more consumerism uh, driven sector. That's number one. Number two, demand remains strong. It's continuing to outpace supply, which is going to stay constrained because of COVID, not much construction of new hotels happened. Third, the infrastructure spend that the government is, uh, is doing, especially, you know, opening of uh, places like Pragati Medan day before yesterday, as well as Dwarka or Geo in Mumbai is going to create new demand, which we have not seen in the past. Fourthly, I think uh, from our point of view, we have embarked on a journey of a very strong growth. We have 79 hotels in pipeline. We've opened five hotels in the first quarter, signed another 11. Uh, so I think uh, our guidance has been we'll open 20 hotels this year. So the not like for like growth through both asset management initiatives of our renovations, smart renovations of existing assets, coupled with the not like for like growth should drive both operating leverage as well as the EBITDA margins going forward. So all in all, we are pleased and last not least is the introduction of new concepts, is the, is the collaboration with Tata New, which is also helping us a lot uh, uh, in the last few quarters. So I think uh, that loyalty driven revenue has increased for us. Our new f &B innovations has helped us. And as I said, our smart renovations and ancillary businesses like private membership club, uh, like a chambers, the renaissance of the Taj Club lounges is all helping us to drive premium performance uh, and quarter after quarter delivering uh, the best quarter. Okay. Oh, that's good to hear. Uh, let me take one by one. You spoke about consumerism and the range of products you're offering, and you spoke about costs a wee bit. Uh, tell us costs. I mean, that obviously could have impacted a bit since costs have gone up. Uh, even your personal costs have gone up a bit. Uh, is this just a one-off? Uh, and do you think uh, revenues will beat? How, how, will margins, uh, how will costs progress from here on and uh, therefore impact on margins? 
we have given a guidance of 33% margin and uh, in our capital market day a lot of questions came that if you have done almost 31.8 in last financial year should that number not be higher and we said no we are going to invest in our businesses uh, for future and we would rather have a larger top line and a 33% of that than to have a cost driven model only so the idea is to to improve the revenue to the extent possible and optimize the costs and we have been spending monies on marketing for our new businesses like cumin like ama and we also call ginger as a new business and you know we are very excited to look at the launch of ginger in santa cruz depending on the monsoon and the strength of the monsoon and when it subsides i think target date is 1st october but latest would be 1st november and that's going to be our flagship in this new business and uh, you know we will be spending money on marketing and other expenses related to it same thing on personnel i think we tend to forget that last year in the q1 it was immediately after the third wave was beginning to subside which was uh, popularly called as the omicron and the cost base was different i think uh, if you have a year like the sector has had last year including indian hotels and some of those wage settlements with the unions uh, some of those increase in uh, employee capacities to support new businesses is a given and i think uh, still boasting of around 30% margin which includes international business because on stand alone we are already at 36 even in q1 i think for hotel sector that's a very very high margin it's like it's a global uh, benchmark almost uh, not many companies could boast of a uh, 30 plus percentage points on a global basis yeah anybody who makes a profit of 1 rupee over every 3 rupees they earn uh, is doing a damn good business i'm not taking away from that but you know oliver twist always asks for more time permitting i'll come to international expansion but uh, uh, let me ask you about taj sirock have you figured out how much uh, investment you will need to make and you will make well sirock we are in the process of getting permissions and uh, for uh, all the reasons we all know uh, it just Uh, is getting a bit delayed and uh, we remain optimistic that by the end of this year we will have uh, the preliminary permissions that are needed uh, the management's focus is there because this is one of the biggest hidden potentials that we have uh, in our portfolio and maybe one of the the last big issue that uh, uh, remains to be resolved so we are working on it we are on the drawing board and um, we are in continuous exchange with the authorities uh, whether it is a bmc or mczma or and hopefully very soon with moef to get the permissions so that focus is there and um, hopefully we will have a solution uh, as soon as possible okay so now to the international uh, expansion uh, first of all when do you expect to be profitable uh, uh, i mean is it profitable in fy24 itself and what are your big plans uh, if any in the international sphere oh my god we are profitable on international business the question is how we report it so some of those businesses you know the management fees that we earn for example in dubai come straight uh, to ihcl for a variety of accounting reasons if we were to add all that back international business is very profitable also in q1 of this year it has been profitable despite the challenging situation in san francisco which is beyond our control uh, and also some challenges we still have uh, in our hotel in new york but london has performed very well dubai our management fee income has been very good maldives has been still going fine and sri lanka is beginning to come back so i think on the international front on the existing portfolio is all good cape town is doing very well and so has lusaka performed for us now coming to the pipeline in the first quarter of this year we added uh, two contracts in dhaka uh, which is for both a taj and a vivanta so i think on the indian subcontinent that was an important capital city that we were missing so in a few years we can expect that to open and um, we have already communicated all the 
improvements we have made in London, including taking our uh, very famous Chinese restaurant concept called House of Ming, uh, which opened in April in London and has been off to a great start. So I think that's where we stand. As per the changes in LODR as of 15th of July, uh, we had to report an in-principle agreement we got for uh, acquiring uh, Lusaka, which we've been running for almost four decades. Um, I think that's another opportunity, just like we did uh, Cape Town at the peak of COVID. And uh, we are not investing, but if we get a rent agreement or it's called a lease agreement uh, for a property in Frankfurt, I think that would be an addition of another strategic dot on the European continent. You know, there's so much to chat, uh, uh, Mr. Chetwal. I will have to invite you uh, in between results season, so I'm not bothered by the numbers and look for more details. Uh, congratulations and thank you very much. Please don't hesitate to invite me. <laughs> All right, sure, sure. Certainly not. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Uh, thank out of you. time thank on you. Bazaar. Out of time on Bazaar, just wanted to add that uh, the Bank Nifty is the one that's giving a lot of trouble and that's directly related to what the BOJ has said, that they will allow yields to rise a little bit. So Indian yields have gone up and that's impacting the Bank Nifty. Wrap up on Bazaar, chart pastors up now.